All right, guys. Just want to talk about changing paths. It's um, it's it's probably one of those things that a lot of people think about but don't do. Um, I've got to admit, years ago, um, originally I went into engineering because you know when you leave school, you're not one hundred percent what you want to do. Um, and my father was always already in engineering, and I enjoyed things like uh, building stuff and understanding how stuff worked. Um, but at the same time, um, I sort of followed the path because it was the easiest option without actually looking into anything else at the time. And I followed it through, um, did a lot of interesting stuff. Um, I moved from like electronics into carpentry, completely different uh, remit. And that was mainly down to the, uh, the recession at the end of the 90s um so it must have been mid 90s now thinking about it because basically i'd finished school um and couldn't get the job i wanted um because there's a big layoff in in the electronics and so everything was going to china um so i then reskilled did carpentry and joinery enjoy doing that even to this day i like it because the thing you've got with it is you can switch off you know from a peace of mind getting out of all the headache stuff on the daily grind um going going away and concentrating on building something nothing better um i do recommend uh carpentry as a, a therapeutic thing but also it's very very creative you can find your limitations on building stuff and it's so much variety you know from very intricate to uh, building buildings which I've done everything from making furniture to building houses to building exhibition stands for um, shows like for Honda, Jaguar, Rover down to Baby Bio um, a lot of variety and a lot of um, interesting things over the years but I moved from that into more management because of, it's like in the exhibitions I found that a lot of people were waiting to be told what to do so when you're having like say a large exhibition stand with about 130 carpenters 20 electricians and all this sort of stuff um, when you're the guy that reads the drawings and say oh can you guys going to do this and you guys going to do that and just take the lead um quite quickly you see that the companies recognize that um you naturally will organize things around you um and that's where i sort of moved into more um management type of role because also i understood the different aspects of it you know i've done lighting i've done sound I've done all the plasma screens, you know, every, anything on the exhibition stand I've pretty much been involved in over the years, you know, inside out. And, and that was where it sort of overlapped into buildings, where I understand the buildings inside out. Um, and it's like today, this one, I'm sort of having a break at the moment, a minute, because I'm currently working out the costs of pretty much every job um, for probably about 10 clinics today. Uh, so everything from changing a pressurization unit to changing a window handle uh, to changing the roof to boilers to redoing concrete retarmacking doing line markings on the car park all that lovely stuff um, I'm working out the cost for every single part of a building um, now that sort of progressed and progressed as I moved through different management layers with different companies. But the thing is, where I'm at at the moment, it's where you're sort of going, is this where I want to stay? Um, now, one of the key things I'm bringing up on this is there's no limitation ex on where you want to be unless you create that limitation yourself. See, for example, I could have stayed in electronics. I could have stayed as a carpenter and joiner. I could have stayed just in the exhibition circuit, working seasonal, go scuba diving for half the year and all that sort of stuff. Um, I wasn't scuba diving, but some of the guys I worked with did. Um, but 
I've constantly evolved into something that's another layer of interest. Because one of the key things is is you've got to be interested. It must be something you want to do because you'll excel at it. You know, if you're in a job that's a job and that's how you define it, you probably got low interest in it which means you can't take it to the next level because your enthusiasm and interest <laughs> isn't there um, and this is where you, the opportunity to evolve into something else may be there where you're sitting there going okay well I'd rather do something else and I'd say taking that jump into something you want to do may be sacrificial short term but long term it's probably going to have a massive benefit to you as a person Financially, it's not always going to be fantastic because jumping careers, um, a lot of skills you can transfer across and a lot you can't. It all depends what you want to do. You know, if you want to go into the medical field, you may find you've got a, a steep learning curve if you were a mechanic. But you may find that you're going to be a lot happier doing that if that's what you want to do. For me, I think my key one is... I. Getting to that point where I am, I want to go back to doing my own stuff. You know, be more of an entrepreneur than working for other people, developing new things because at the moment everything's same same. You know, and my industry's changed because um, when I come into it, a guy that was like a charge hand or a uh, supervisors should we call them today um they'd probably be in their 50s i was already a, a supervisor in my i think i was 32 to 36 that's 20 years of experience is gone because there's less people coming into the industry today um because i'm on the facility side not on the construction side but the construction's riddled with the same thing it's this obsession with graduates and non-time served people that are saturating the industry but you're losing knowledge people like myself that just go i can't work with these people anymore um they don't know what they're doing it's they don't want to learn it's often this spouted aggressive tone um with a tone of arrogance thrown in for good measure um without any actually understanding what they're actually talking about and it's, yeah, it's a strange environment. But I could go, oh, you know, this, is, this isn't this is for me. Call it a day, blah, blah, blah. But I see it from an entrepreneur, entrepreneur's environment side where you go, okay, how was I doing it before? Well, the answer was I was a uh, subcontractor working out my own business. And a lot of the nonsense and politics you don't get because they have to define what they actually want because they're paying for that. So for example, if you wanted a, what I'm doing now, a cost analysis piece, you go, right, what's your scope? What do you need? And that's it, there's no politics in it. It's what's written on that document. That's what we want, that's what you're paying for, that's what you're getting, nothing else. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I've, the big problem I've got in the industry at the moment is a lot of the people out there do not know what any of this actually means. Um, they don't know what the output looks like or often how to use the output. But that gets the uh, entrepreneur side going, go, there's opportunity here. Um, but the whole point of this video today is to sort of say, well, you may be thinking the same yourself in different ways. You know, that you're not happy where you are. And you could carry on for the, well, until the grave. But wouldn't it be better to change to something you actually enjoy and like doing? Um, and it's not going to be an easy step. But self-fulfillment and doing something you enjoy, I think it's worth the risk. And let's face it, what you're doing now, I'm sure you could come back to it. Um... There's a massive skill shortage out there. And I think the other side of this is the whole COVID scenario upset the apple cart. Because I see a ridiculous amount of jobs that are now remote working, hybrid, well, 
they go remote with a little bit. So I've been wanting in the office one or two days a week. Um, they've got hybrid working. They're trying to get people back to work. But a lot of people become enlightened to why do I need to go to the office? Oh, because we like seeing you in the office. But I literally work on a computer and didn't, you know, don't need to be here. Um, or like myself, the office isn't actually where my work's done, it's on the sites. Because we, we manage buildings, we manage projects. The office is for meetings pretty much. The rest of it isn't really needed. This is why a lot of the uh, bigger companies are tapped onto that because obviously um, in my industry, one of the biggest expenses is office space. If you can reduce that to hot desks and get 2,000 people in the same space as 150 instead of 2,000 desks, bizarrely, that's a massive saving. Um, at the same time, you also find the contracts you currently have may have already factored in the 2,000 office spaces. So, guess what? Higher profits. Um, so the opportunities are there. And then the key to it is actually thinking about, do you want to make take the risk? Do you want to make the change? Or do you want to stay where you are? If you're going to stay where you are, you need to get used to it. Um, there's no point grumbling. If you're not going to make the commitment to change, then you're stuck. You've made the decision to stay there, which is then do more with your spare time which is the best thing you can do, which is, I don't know, it could be city breaks, it could be um, learning some new skills, it could be traveling, it could be, um, I don't know, motorcycling, off-road, off-roading, canoeing, whatever it is, you, you find another passion that you can get some value out of, because if you're committed to the job, and yet, it's not a job you love. You need something else to get through the week. This is why they, a lot of people, I mean, I used to watch the old black and white movies where they, they'd be obsessed about going to football on this, you know, the weekend. And in fact, you was talked about the game and all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, I never got it until probably in the last few, few years when you start to think, because that is their only thing people have got to look forward to. Because... They've got the mortgage, they've got a job that, because it's going back a few years before the rise of automation, they might be on a machine just pulling the handle all day. They've got nothing during the working day that is going to make their life interesting um, or add value. You know, Maybe looking forward to playing cards at lunchtime or something, but the point being is there's not a lot going on. Um, so the football... It was so important. It's the same as it all goes back to like the TV now and the, this drive of dribble because um, it's like stuff with Ant and Deck. I'm I can't stand the pair of them, but I don't watch anything of these reality shows or in the jungle or any of that nonsense because there's no there's no value in it. Um, but it's about the coliseums. It's about keeping people ha ha content because. People who aren't content of a habit of rising up against countries. Um, you've got to find, if you're going to stay where you are, accept where you are, but there is other things out there. Um, I think I talked in my last video about start the savings account. There's, a, there's one thing. You could actually start accumulating any spare cash you've got and get it to a point where it's fully sustainable. So you can call it a day and disappear off to Asia you know it's all in, your, all in your hands and I got my first four pound interest this month <laughs> doesn't sound a lot but the fact is it's nice to actually see a positive output because um, obviously I've got um, interest on my mortgage and other things which are going the other way so to see an account that's actually heading in the other direction is a very good thing um, but like I said like that it's a small positive to me and there's a lot of other stuff out there that i'm sure you guys can do as well anyway just thought i'd throw that out there today because i'm sitting doing spreadsheets and i thought i'll have a break for 10 minutes because i was thinking about this this morning i was just listening to a podcast with jimmy carr um let me see what it is i was 
turn the volume down just to... Uh, don't put the volume on. It went straight into an advert. Hang on, I'll find out which one. Oh, I've lost it now. Um, that's my history. Because somebody was asking me about what podcast I listen to. Um, let me just find... I've lost it now. Because I listen to a lot of um, podcasts that relate to sort of interviews and the, the history behind people and their thoughts on things. And Jimmy's Cars was quite an interesting one relating to his background and his pursuit of happiness. Jimmy Carr. Let's pull up with me for two seconds. Uh, is that it? Yeah, if you look for the diary of a CEO, Jimmy Carr, this is the one I was just watching. But you'll find on the diary of a CEO that there's quite a lot of interesting interviews. Um, so that's one of the ones I listen to regular. When I'm working, I'll leave it on in the background. Um, so that's one of my main channels. If you want um, specific channels, do I listen to stuff on the Philippines? And to be honest, no. Um, I used to a while back because we were sort of interwoven with stuff in the Philippines because obviously that's where I was. Um, but don't really watch anything on Philippines, on Spain. Uh, all my stuff is normally around uh, things like uh, Ukraine war at the moment. I'm trying to get a broader view on that. Uh, Jordan Peterson. Um, a lot of the uh, progressive stuff, like in this. When I say progressive, I'm not talking about art or something like that. I'm on about personal development. Uh, so like Simon Sinek is another good one because for for him I find it his understanding of leadership and stuff fits into my own ideals. Um, so that's the sort of stuff I listen to. But yeah, Diary, Diary of a CEO will be one that will be useful for you because there's loads in there if that's what you're after. Philippines, not so much these days. So you probably know more than I do. Um, well, to be fair, I don't think it's changed that much except for traffic in Cebu. Um, in Spain, I've covered a, a lot of the topics that I wanted to cover about moving there. So I've got to rejig that channel because I think we're going to do more on tourism. I, I need to organise some spare time, head up to Valencia and other places. Um, and obviously this channel is going to... Although we talk about a lot of the personal development stuff, at the moment it's sort of getting a mix of the way I think and what I'm doing and how that sort of interfaces with some of the stuff from reading, understanding, etc, etc, um, and progressing. Because like I said, like at the moment, I'm ready for that career jump. Now, to put this in perspective, I'm 50 this year. Now, if I'm prepared to completely change my career at 50, if you're younger than me, you got to understand that, firstly, I have a lot of knowledge, experience, and um, capabilities. Capabilities are a key one, because networking, understand how to make things work, how to get your foot in the door, that's that's a key thing. That's why, you know, having before the, uh, the call center, a lot of that's direct sales, not my type of thing, but it's very useful for... Um, developing confidence in some ways. And I say in some ways because getting told where to go every 10 minutes on the phone isn't great. But having some sales capabilities and understanding and knowledge sets you up for when you're trying to, say, go to a conference and try and introduce yourself to other people. It's the same as doing the YouTube videos. Um, I started these, if you go way back to the beginning, you'll see how bad the videos are, where, like now, you'll see how relaxed I am in front of the camera. Because I don't have to think about it. I'm not trying to make notes or anything. I literally just put the camera on and just say it. Um, that that sort of evolved over time. Um, so a lot of this channel is sort of looking at where I'm heading next. 
and I know some of you guys have followed me since 2000 and I think the first channel went live in 2008 maybe later I think the blog was 2008 I think the original start of the blog was the end of 2007 I know some of you guys have followed me since then but we've gone out to Asia did everything there we've done, done pretty well out there moved to Spain got the house set up in Spain now got a load more work in the UK and now it's sort of like I need to move to the next stage um, but the whole point of sort of blending this stuff together with the personal development and thoughts and insights um, alongside my own stuff is, is to show that it can be done it's the same as if I get a knockback you know I talk about most of them um, you know for example Having the house ripped off, the, the roof ripped off in the uh, typhoons in the Philippines. Going through the issues of my siblings, the death of my parents, um, the general complications that, <laughs> that go on in life. Because they will knock you back. And you'll see a lot of stuff like if you go to LinkedIn, look how much negative stuff there is there. It's literally just whitewashed nonsense. Self-loathing, how great everybody is. Either they're kissing their own backside or kissing someone else's. Um, it's just vulgar. <laughs> it's just vulgar. I'd rather people were more open about their uh, reality, you know. Um, rather than this false painting of themselves, you know. Like... Every picture is a holiday picture, not just there, like Facebook and everything. It's a lot of excessive positive stuff. Don't get me wrong. If you look on the video, the um, shorts on here, I think last week I uploaded a load of videos from London. Now, they all look nice walking around London, don't they? But at the same time, the bit you can't see is that's me returning to a hotel at around half past ten at night after working all day because I've been all over London working uh, I've been walking in the rain all sorts and that's like on my last trench back to the hotel I take the five minutes and this is where the positive spin comes in and go right I'm finishing work now I've got to take some nice videos I'm seeing what's beautiful around me so rather than finishing going I'm tired I'm fed up, I hate all this. I took the five minutes and just video things I, I could see that were nice on the way back. And that's that's a real positive, because the point being is the videos are there, but I've just filled in the gap, which is long day, crap day, soaking wet in the rain, walking the last two miles back to the hotel. But do you know what? Still managed to get a positive outlook on it. But two sides, it's not just all happiness. <laughs> right, guys? Thanks for watching.